now to the press review. Uh, Turkey has finally said yes to Sweden's ascension to NATO, just as the bloc's annual summit begins in Lithuanian capital, Vilnius. And it's gathering a lot of attention in the press today, isn't it, Dipti? That's right, Solange. It's the main story of the day, and it is garnering a lot of attention in the world's papers. Turkey had been holding up Sweden's accession to NATO for the past several months, but now Ankara has given its green light just as NATO's summit uh, gets underway in the Lithuanian capital of uh, Vilnius. Now, the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, finally agreed to Sweden joining the bloc, sealed with a handshake, as you see there on the front page of Aftonbladet a uh, Swedish paper, uh, that handshake between Erdogan and the Swedish Prime Minister, uh, Ulf Christensen. An historic moment, the paper says, really hailing this reversal in Ankara's decision. The tone is, though, markedly more sarcastic in this Swedish daily here, uh, which uh, sees, uh, this is a Svenska Dagbladet, which sees on its front page, uh, uh, welcomes the end of, quote, a year of horse trading inflicted by Turkey, by the Turkish president, the paper choosing to credit Norway instead of Turkey for uh, the facilitating Sweden's entry into NATO. And the big question, of course, is uh, what Sweden agreed to uh, in order for Turkey to lift its bloc. Uh, well, uh, this is uh, the focus of the Daily Sabah today. That's a Turkish paper. Uh, which says that Stockholm has assured Ankara that it will not support terrorist organizations. Now, one of Turkey's major gripes was that Sweden was allowing uh, supporters of the Kurdish People's Party to hold demonstrations in the country. Also noting that part of uh, the part of Turkey lifting its bloc was also due to U.S. the U.S. pledging to sell uh, the country F-16s. And for the Washington Post, indeed, that was really the deal breaker for uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Uh, the Washington Post today noting that Turkey had made a strategic blunder back in 2017 when it had purchased uh, Russian mi missiles only for it to be slapped with U.S. sanctions. Uh, the Post saying now that it now that Turkey desperately needs to upgrade its air force fleet, it has chosen U.S. jets. And that was the deal breaker for uh, Turkey lifting its block uh, on Sweden entering NATO. Moving along now, Dipti, uh, several episodes of extreme weather are making the front pages today as well. Yeah, that's right. Let's start with La Repubblica uh, Solange. This is from uh, the Italian Daily, the headline, uh, uh, the paper headlining on what it calls the climate massacre here. Uh, this in reference to a report that came out yesterday uh, that indicated a staggering 61,000 uh, people in Europe last year died of heat-related issues between May and September. This, of course, due to ongoing episodes of heat waves across the continent. Uh, La Repubblica particularly are alarmed by this because Italy actually tops uh, that list with the most number of deaths. Now, uh, moving to the Washington Post, which uh, for its part is headlining on uh, damage and death um, in historic flooding in the states of New York and Vermont, where a state of emergency has been declared. That image is very striking. Of of the flooding here that is expected to continue for some hours to come and uh, from uh, flooding to landslides this is on the front of the of the Japan Times here uh, also uh, following um, uh, deadly landslides triggered by torrential torrential rain in the south of the country uh, the highest alert level issued for certain near areas uh, meaning that uh, lives are in imminent danger and immediate action needs to be taken so long. Now, it's been five years since the world watched rescuers pull out and into safety a team of junior footballers in Thailand, uh, where they were stuck in an underground cave for several days. That's right. And it was uh, indeed in uh, the... Uh, it was in... The, this is not the story. Uh, the, it was in uh, The Telegraph today. Uh, the team nicknamed the Wild Boars got caught after a sudden downpour flooded the Tam Luang Cave there. A rescue uh, involved divers from all over the world who needed nine days to pull the boys and their coach to safety after they had already been stuck there for nine days. Uh, on Monday, the team and their coach re-entered the cave to remember that um, traumatic rescue in which two divers were killed. They also paid tribute to one of their former team members who sadly passed away uh, suddenly this year in the UK. So 
Now, a United plane from Houston to Amsterdam uh, was forced to be rerouted to Chicago, reportedly because of an unruly passenger. What's that about? Yeah, uh, not, and this passenger was not drunk or sick. Uh, rather, it was a passenger in business class who allegedly had a major, allegedly had a major hissy fit because his or her preference for a meal was not available. According to a flight site, the business class meals available on that sector on this flight include seared beef, short rib, or seared lemongrass salmon, uh, but not to the passengers liking who allegedly kicked up a fuss and the plane had to be rerouted. Maybe they should uh, make that person eat in economy class next time. That'll be a very fitting punishment, I think. <laughs> Indeed, it will. <laughs> You're ending, though, on something a little different. Uh, Titan's penis? That's right, the flower. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's specify. <laughs> Um, it's uh, it's in it's a flower. It's actually uh, it's huge. It's the biggest flower in the world. It's in full bloom right now. That's what this local uh, French paper Est, uh, L'Est Républicain explains. Uh, it's blossoming at the Jardin Jean Marie Pelt. That's in eastern France, uh, and uh, the website of the botanical garden uh, has been providing us with a day by day account of the flowers. Um, blooming as of yesterday, as you see here, uh, the flower was uh, nearly uh, two meters high. It blooms only once a decade, which is why everyone's getting so excited um, about this. Uh, obviously, cold Titan's penis for its phallic looking appearance. It also smells very foul, uh, some say resembling rotten eggs or a dead corpse. I'd love to see one at some time in my life. I'd have to bring a nose pinch <laughs> to get Laurent with the press review.